Hey, it's Jake, and I'm really excited because today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite expressions, the linear expression. And the reason why I like it so much is because a lot of times when you're making custom controls for yourself in After Effects, you can run into issues and it can get kind of frustrating, but then the linear expression comes along and goes, I got you. So what does linear allow you to do? Well, I've set up a demo here that's hopefully gonna give you a very good visual representation of the possibilities that the linear expression gives you. So we've got this grid that comes on, all these pixel values, and then a line. So what are we looking at here? This is a grid that's spaced out by 50 pixel increments. I've marked the 100 pixel increments here, and you can see those little tick marks on the rulers. And then we have a line connecting these two dots. This dot is driving this dot on the Y axis. So if I were to grab this and move it up and down, that's what's gonna happen. It's just gonna follow it and that line is gonna stay straight across between the two. It's just connecting them. So if I continue in my timeline, you see that it moves up and down and it goes up to 100 pixels and then drops down to 900 pixels and the dot on the right is just following whatever it does. So here are the position keyframes. You can see it just move up and back down and it's doing exactly the same thing. Now the way that I've set this up to follow that is by going into the position. So let me bring up position and look at just the Y, and I've written a variable. The variable is just referencing the Y position of the other layer, which is named input. I'm calling this layer output and this layer input. So we've got variable input equals, and then the Y position for the input layer. And then I just simply call that variable down here in my expression so that the Y position of the output is always the same as the input. Great but that's not all that useful. In its simplest form, what the linear expression allows you to do is remap a range of values to a different range of values. So I'm gonna get rid of my size and stroke width by holding down Option or Alt and Shift and then clicking on them to hide those properties so I can focus on just the Y position. This input layer starts at 540, right in the middle of the comp. This is a 1920 by 1080 comp. So it starts right in the middle of the comp and then it goes up to 100 pixels on the y-axis and then drops down to 900 pixels on the y-axis. And again, the output is mirroring exactly that same number. You see up here, that number changes with the input. But let's say when this number goes down to 100, we don't want the output to go all the way down to 100. What if we wanted it to only go to say 400? And then when the input goes up to 900, we only want it to travel to say 600. Well, that's exactly what linear is going to allow us to do. So I'm gonna go back to my output layer into this expression and rewrite it a little bit. So I'm gonna get rid of input and I'll start writing out the linear expression. The format of it is linear, then an open parentheses, then the property that we want linear to be dealing with. In this case, it's the input's Y position. And since I have that as a variable already, I can just type in input and then we need to do four numbers and we separate everything by commas so after input i'll put a comma and then we need two numbers this is our first range and it's a range of this input of whatever you put in first in this linear expression so the range we want to look at is the y position from 100 to 900 because that's what these keyframes go to it first goes up to 100 then down to 900. So I'll just type in 100, and this is the minimum value that we're gonna be looking at the input for, then another comma, and we need to put the max value, which would be 900 pixels. So I'll say 900, and that's our first range, the minimum and maximum values of our input. Then we need to put another comma and two more numbers, and this is going to be the output range. So we can think about it like this. When the input, is set to 100, 100 pixels, what do we want the output to be set to? Well, we said 400 pixels. When this is at 100, this one should be at 400. So I'm gonna type in 400, and then I separate that by another comma, and now we need the maximum value of the output, which we said would be 600. So I'll type in 600, then close that off with a parentheses, and finish it off with a semicolon. That is our complete linear expression. So we wanna linearize the input value, which is the Y position for the input layer, 
That's what we define in our variable. And we want to linearize the number ranges from 100 to 900 on the input range to an output range of 400 to 600. I'll click off to apply that expression, and already this updates. So I'll play this back and we'll see what happens. Look at that. So now when this input value goes up to 100, the output value is only going up to 400. And when it goes down to 900, it only goes down to 600. So that's how you can think about linear. It allows you to remap one range of values to any other range of values. And these values can be whatever you want. Right now we're only looking at the input of 100 to 900. So if I were to bring this up past 100, you'll notice that right there, once I get past the 100, this number stops moving. So if this was up to zero, it's gonna ignore everything between zero and 100, then it'll kick in. And then once it gets to 900, it's gonna stop paying attention and I can keep going as far as I want. It's never going to affect this. So instead of 100 and 900, I could say uh, zero and 1080, since that's the height of my comp. And now if I move this number around, see it keeps traveling with it. So once it hits zero is when that goes to 400. And if I push that all the way to 1080, that's when it gets to 600. To make this even a little more dynamic, for this second number, instead of 1080, I could say this comp dot height, and that's gonna just measure the comp height. Now that happens to be 1080, but if I were to resize this comp to say 800 by 800 or something like that, then it's gonna update, and that makes it a little bit more dynamic. And let's say I wanted to invert it. I could, instead of saying 400 and 600, I could say the output minimum value would be this comp dot height and the maximum value would be zero. Now what's gonna happen is this is gonna be an inverted number of this because we're looking at the range from zero on the minimum to the comp height on the maximum and translating it to the comp height on the minimum and zero on the maximum. So let's play this back and see what happens. Now those are gonna move in opposite directions. So these range values can be any number. It doesn't have to be just a hard-coded number. It could even be a variable if you wanted it to be. It could be equations. You can even have linear equations as one of these range values. It's incredibly powerful and it opens up so many possibilities when writing your expressions. And if you're wondering how this line was built, I actually didn't do it. This is a preset from the Koenig's mixtape from Paul Canigliaro, I think I'm pronouncing that right. But this is just a pack of presets that he's developed that are just incredibly useful and it's name your own price. The guy put a lot of work into this and he's actually helped me out with my own expressions personally. So definitely go support this guy, Paul's awesome. All right, now that you've gotten a basic understanding of how this linear expression works, I've set up another demo here to kind of get you thinking about the possibilities that this opens up. So I just have a simple square, and if we take a look at the rotation, this property is measured in degrees, right? So going from zero to 360 is a full revolution. It rotates 360 degrees. Let's say that I wanted to control that rotation, but with a slider. So I'm gonna come up to Effect, Expression Controls, Slider Control, which defaults to having a value between zero and 100. Now this does nothing on its own, it's just a value driven by a slider that gives me the ability to reference it using expressions. So I wanna write an expression on the rotation. I'll hold down Option or Alt and click on the stopwatch and then just grab the expression pick whip and select that slider control. Now the rotation is being driven directly by this slider control. So if I turn it up, you can see my, ro my box is rotating and I can turn that all the way up to 100. Problem is, that is a direct relationship between those two values. 0 to 100 gives me a range of 0 to 100 degrees. What if I wanted this 0 to 100 to equal a full rotation? You can kind of think of the slider as a percentage since it goes from 0 to 100. At 0, it should be at 0 degrees, and at 100, it should be at one full rotation. Well, that's a perfect candidate for the linear expression. So let's go ahead and write that. I'll edit my expression, and since I already have this in here, I'll turn it into a variable. At the front, I'll type var, and then just R for rotation equals that slider, semicolon to finish that line, and then drop down and type in my linear expression. So linear, open parentheses, R, and that is going to reference the slider that we just added, comma, and then we'll put our first range, the minimum and maximum input values of the rotation slider. 
So we want this to be a range from 0 to 100. And then we need our output minimum and maximum. So we'll do another comma and say 0, because at the minimum, we still want the value to be 0 degrees. But at the maximum, comma, we want it to be at 360 degrees. I'll close that off, semicolon to finish it, and apply the expression. Now, when I rotate this, you can see that it goes from zero to zero. And as I turn this up, it's rotating, rotating, rotating. Once it gets to 100, then it's done a complete rotation, 360 degrees. Everywhere in between is a different angle. So that's a great example of how you can use the linear expression to control different values with custom built controls. Even though the numbers aren't even really in the same units, the linear expression allows you to translate those numbers into whatever you need them to be. So I'll rename this slider just rotation, and then I'll duplicate it and we'll make a slider that's called x position. And let's tie the x position of this square to that as well. So I'll press P to bring that up, and on the x position, hold down Option or Alt and click, and then define that variable. So VAR x for x position equals expression pick whip that slider and semicolon to finish that variable. Drop down and type out linear, and then I'll put in x to target that slider, comma, and the range I want to deal with is still 0 to 100, because that is the range of this slider. Then I'll do another comma, and I'll say 0 on the x, comma, and then this comp dot width. Close parentheses, semicolon. So what I'm telling After Effects to interpret is when this slider value is at zero, put the value of the X position to zero, and when it's at 100, then make the X position value equal to this comp's width, which is 1920. So this should push the box across the screen as I move the slider. I'll apply it, and it jumps over there because my X position is set to 100. If I grab that slider, I can now reposition the box from the left edge of the comp to the right with a simple slider that, again, you can think of like a percentage. So if I set it to 50, it's going to go right in the middle of the comp. So now I have two sliders affecting two different properties. But when I put this all the way down to zero, half of my box is off to the side. Same thing on the opposite side. What if I wanted to contain this within the comp? Well, we can do that pretty easily with this linear expression. All we need to know, or all we need to tell After Effects, is what the size of this box is. So I'm going to open up this layer, go into the contents, into the rectangle, into the rectangle path, and there's my size. I'll just give myself a little bit more room, and then add another variable to my exposition expression. So I'm going to drop down a line and type in VAR, W for width, equals, and then expression pick whip, the first number in the size, which is the width of that box. Then I'll press semicolon to finish that. So now I have a variable for the exposition slider, and the width of the box. So in my linear expression, I can now look at my second range, which is going from zero to the comp's width. Instead of zero, I want it to be half the size of the box because the anchor point's right in the middle, so I only need half of that width to be accounted for. So I'm gonna get rid of that zero and type in W divided by two. So half of the width. And then on the second value, the maximum output, where the box is right now, I want it to be this comp width minus the width of the box divided by two. So on the minimum output, instead of zero, I want it to be half of the box's width, and then on the output, I want it to be the comp's width minus half the box so that it stays inside. I'll apply that, and look at that. Now my box is lined up perfectly with the edge of the comp. I'll zoom in here, and move my slider. Now that's staying right inside the comp perfectly. And I'll double tap E on the keyboard to bring up the expressions, option shift click on the properties I don't need to look at, and that's working exactly the way that I want it to. But if I zoom in here nice and close, you can see that the box's shape is being butted up right against the side of the comp, but the stroke is actually getting cut off. Well, we can actually account for that too. So I'm going to collapse this layer one more time, go in and find the stroke. There's my stroke width and give myself a little bit more space again, and I want to write another variable into this X position expression. I'll drop down one more line, VAR S for stroke equals, and then I'll expression pick whip the stroke width, and finish that off with a semicolon. Now you'll notice that this stroke is centered, so I'm only going to need half of that stroke, just like I only needed half of the box. 
And with that in mind, I can keep editing my expression. So I want the minimum output to be not just the width divided by two, but the width divided by two plus the stroke divided by two. I'll click off that and look at that. My box has shifted over to the right just barely to account for that stroke width. Then I need to make sure that I do the same thing on the other side. So the maximum output will be the width of the comp minus half of the box minus half of the stroke. If I zoom back out to fit and test this out, there we go, you can see the full width of the stroke. And to show you why this is so powerful, if I now just adjust the stroke of the box, you'll see that it is dynamically getting pushed away from the edge of the comp because that linear expression is accounting for that size. And if I double tap U to bring up all my modified properties, I can easily increase the size of the box and the same thing is gonna happen because my linear expression is paying attention to the width of both the box and the stroke and accounting for that within the position value. And that's all being driven by this single exposition slider. And one last thing I wanna point out is that you don't have to have these values in a linear expression paying attention to an entire range. So this slider goes from zero to 100 on the rotation. But if I were to edit this and look at the minimum input and maximum input, I don't have to save from zero to 100 just because that's the minimum maximum of my slider. I could save from 25 to 75 on my min and max input and leave output to zero and 360. Now, nothing is gonna happen on this rotation with this slider until it hits 25 right there. And then between 25 and 75 is where that complete rotation is gonna happen and nothing after 75 is gonna affect it. So again, the linear expression just opens up so many possibilities and there's so many different ways that you can implement it into your own graphics to make custom rigs that can a lot of times make animations easier because once they're set up, you can focus on the animation and allow After Effects to do a lot of the complex calculations for you in the background. So there's your crash course basics intro to the linear expression. Hopefully through those demos, you're able to see just why it's so valuable and why I'm using it constantly for doing things like rigging up controls and making these relationships between different properties just so much more easy to manage. So if you're using this linear expression at all, be sure to tag me anywhere on social media at Jake in Motion so I can see. If you have any trouble at all, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try and help you work that problem out. But now that we have a pretty good understanding of this linear expression, we can use it in other projects and I'm definitely gonna be referencing it a lot in other tutorials. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.